Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, the furthest south you can get in these 48 continental United States. Less specifically than that, I'm in Key West, Florida. And here in Key West, Florida, we have a marker to commemorate the southernmost point in the continental United States. I think Hawaii is a little further south, but here in the, in, the, in the classic 48, US classic, we have the southernmost point here in the Key West. And as you can see, people are queuing up here to get their picture taken in front of the southernmost marker. People queuing up as if they're waiting to get on Space Mountain. Getting some southernmost selfies right there. Look at this, someone yarn bombed this palm tree. I, I didn't know people still yarn bombed. Oh yeah, I know, I saw that. All right, I guess I'm gonna wait my turn in line here. And here yeah, we okay. are at the southernmost point in the continental United States, only 90 miles from Cuba. So there we are, we made it. Right next to the southernmost monument, there is a monument to a conch blower blowing that conch and making that sweet conch music. So I've been in Key West here for the last couple days, I've actually been enjoying my uh, anniversary with my wife. We decided to take her down here to celebrate our anniversary. I didn't want to be filming the whole time during our anniversary, so I've been mostly relaxing, enjoying the island. But um, she was off doing something today, so I figured I would show you guys uh, some of the cool things that lurk on this very island. This is the southernmost, southernmost house in the USA. Oh, yeah, there it is. Why did they put southernmost twice? Here's a Key West weather station. If a coconut is wet, it's raining. If the coconut is swaying, it's windy. Not very windy right now, as you can see. Uh, if it's hot, it's sunny. If it's cool, it's overcast. If it's floating, it's high tide. And if it's gone, there's a hurricane. Here comes the conch train. Cruising down the streets of Key West. It's here like we have uh, Fidel Castro as a half man, half cigar monster. As you walk around Key West, you just see roosters everywhere. These are uh, roosters that are actually descended from Cuban fighting roosters. And when uh, rooster fighting became illegal, they were uh, set loose and now they are still living in Key West in droves. And there we have Elvis Presley as a cigar, which is interesting. And there's another, another cigar man here. This is a cigar waiter. We have a uh, rainbow crosswalks right here. Some sort of half man, half cigar drum player. There's a lot of cigars here in Key West. See the beautiful Strand Theater there. Oddly enough, inside it's, uh, it's just a Walgreens. See the old ticket window here. We have Betty, the, uh, the ticket collector. See? It's just a Walgreens. Popular thing to do here in Key West is to take your money and staple it to a bar. Oh my gosh, look at all those, look at all those baby chicks. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, oh, they're all looking for garbage to eat. Sorry, I didn't bring any bird seed. This is a three-story bar here. You have the bowl bar on the bottom floor, the whistle bar 
up there on the second floor. And then on the roof is the Garden of Eden, which is a clothing optional bar. This is probably the most famous bar in Key West, Sloppy Joe's, famous for its connection to Ernest Hemingway, who famously drank at the Sloppy Joe's bar. Now this Sloppy Joe's is a great bar, but it's actually not the original building that uh, Ernest Hemingway drank in. The original Sloppy Joe's bar, right around the corner here, now known as Captain Tony's. You can see home of Sloppy Joe's, 1933 to 1937 when Ernest Hemingway would have drank here. But uh, this bar is famous in its own right. Uh, actually is referred to directly in a Jimmy Buffett song, Last Mango in Paris. As you can see here, they not only hang dollars on the bar, but also bras and license plates. The Sloppy Joe's bar is built around this tree here, which is was the tree used for hangings here in Key West. So people have been executed for hanging from this tree that now sits in the middle of a bar. And at the foot of the tree, there's an actual gravestone. This is a Reba Sawyer's grave. It said that her husband found out after she died that she had been cheating on him with a man that she was meeting at Sloppy Joe's, so he brought her gravestone to uh, be here forever, as he, as he said that she would have wanted it that way. The stools are actually marked with famous people that have sat in them. Apparently Dustin Hoffman sat in this stool. And here's the seat of Walter Cronkite and John Prine. Some of the more famous stools are, are hung up high so people can't ruin them with their butts. There's a Truman Capote stool right there. The Jimmy Buffett stool. And then John F. Kennedy and Harry Truman. And of course, Papa Hemingway, better known as Ernest Hemingway. Over here by the pool tables, we have another gravestone. This is the gravestone of, of Elvira. Said uh, she's 19 years old. She was actually a, uh, she was actually hung on that very hanging tree that we saw. She was executed. Apparently, she was a murderess. Memorabilia all over the walls, dedicated to uh, Tony Terracino, the, the owner of Captain Tony's. He uh, ran for mayor in uh, Key West, and you can see in that box there, there is a carving of Captain Tony as well as two shrunken heads. You can see embedded amongst all these dollars and license plates, there is a, uh, a, a, a bedpan. And here is the smallest bar in America. Look how tiny, Look how tiny it is. It can only fit just like four people and a bartender. And this makes me pretty sad here. This used to be Ripley's, believe it or not, but it is uh, closed down as a Ripley's and opened up as cureforearth.org. Now any visit to Key West would not be complete without a stop by the Fort East Martello Museum, the home of one of Key West's most famous inhabitants. Oh, I see him. He's down that way. And uh, as we enter through these doors, there he is. Every time I'm in Key West, I gotta stop by and say hello to Robert the doll. Now, Robert here is possibly the most famous haunted doll in the world, maybe next to Annabelle the doll but uh, yeah the story is he was owned by uh, a local here in Key West. little boy received Robert as a gift and um, people would notice strange things giggling movement people would say Robert would be looking out a window in the house and he would turn his head um, the the owner 
uh, actually was named Robert and gave Robert his own name and went by his middle name of Jean and uh, kept Robert his whole life, gave Robert his own bedroom in the home even after he had married a woman. And uh, you know, lots of legends of movement. Some say that the movie Child's Play with the living doll Chucky was based on Robert the doll. And this television up here are letters people sent uh, apologizing to Robert for for taking his picture. Apparently, he gives out a curse if you uh, if you take his picture without permission. It says we are sorry for taking your picture without permission. Please remove your curse. We get the message. Please fix my eye, my Xbox. He broke his eye and his Xbox. And says this person said their their camera batteries went dead. Uh, that, that their their luggage was lost and then then covered in sawdust. So yeah, don't uh, don't don't mess with Robert. Remember, you need Robert's permission before you take his photo. So let's, uh, Mr. Mr. Robert. I know uh, I, I, we've met before, and um, and I, I just hope that you would be okay with me uh, taking your picture and taking a little video. You know, I'm just gonna put it up on up on YouTube. I think people would enjoy it. Is that is this okay? Is all that all right with you? Actually, the last video I posted with Robert, people left comments apologizing, apologizing to Robert for watching the video without his permission. So I don't know if you need to apologize to Robert for watching this video, but you know, I just obtained permission. I think Robert's okay with this video by the, uh, the look on his face. I'd say uh, he's completely happy with all of this. Right here is the state of Florida recognizing uh, Robert's 101st birthday back in 2005. This was signed by the governor Jeb Bush in honor of uh, Robert. And check out this. From the White House, the, the President George W. Bush, while he was president, sent Robert a happy birthday uh, letter. It says, your generation has taught Americans a timeless lesson of courage, endurance, and love. By sharing your wisdom and experiences, continue to serve as a role model for future generations. I'm not entirely sure George Bush understood who Robert, who Robert was. And here's a proclamation from Key West's mayor declaring that his 101st birthday, that uh, October 22nd, 2006, is Robert the Enchanted Dial Day. I think enchanted is the PC word for haunted, so Robert, you're not. You're not a haunted doll. You're enchanted. We have this child's playhouse from the 1900s. Let's take a little peek inside. Oh, look at this. More dolls. More dolls. And you guys, <laughs> you guys are not the creepiest dolls in this museum. Oh, look. It's like Annabelle the doll. In the center area of the fort, we have what they call the Citadel Tower. Take a look in here. Because this takes us upstairs. Oh, look at that old staircase. Here they have these really cool sculptures. Just check those out. Look at that beautiful showgirl right there. Oh, he's got an axe. What's he saying? You. All right, continuing up the old stairs. Okay, on top of the tower. Beautiful view up here. Looking out into the ocean. Alright, 
back down these swirling stairs. Check out this can in here. It has shark fins. If you actually look in the barrel, it's like it shoots moray eels. I think there's a big iguana lurking over there. Oh my gosh, there's iguanas everywhere. You can see all this Robert the Doll merchandise. See the little replica Robert dolls. I actually have one of those in my bunker. All sorts of other Robert stuff as well. Robert Christmas ornament, Robert keychain, Robert drink koozie. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. A little uh, Robert string doll. Yeah. Ooh, it's black snow. Very spooky. Yeah. Robert. This beautiful home right here is referred to as the artist's house. It's currently a bed and breakfast, but it originally was the home of Robert the Doll. So yes, this was the former home of Gene Otto, the owner of Robert the Doll, and he gave Robert his own bedroom. So people would see Robert, the little doll, peeking out the window right up there. Stopped off here at the beautiful Key West Cemetery. The Key West Cemetery, known for having some of the most unusual epitaphs in the world. As we see here, Miss B.P. Roberts on her grave says, I told you I was sick. Apparently she was a local hypochondriac and no one believed her. And then she proved them all wrong by dying. And then right above there, we have the epitaph of Miss Gloria M. Russell, which says, I'm just resting my eyes. Just resting her eyes, right, right, right past those doors. This is a very interesting above ground grave right there where the body is actually above the marking. It's the grave of Kermit Forbes. It says lovingly known as Shine sparred with Hemingway. Looks like he had a boxing match with Ernest Hemingway. That's that's pretty awesome. These here are the cremation vaults, meaning someone purchased a small vault uh, which to place cremated ashes. Steve Province, AKA Dead Steve, I guess, cause he's dead. So long and thanks for all the fish. That's from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Stacy J. Lane says, I'm feeling much better now. Interesting. Allendale Wilcox says, if you're reading this, you desperately need a hobby. Guess you need something more interesting to do than uh, reading epitaphs in a graveyard. Jeremy Paul Brewer, a man amongst men, killer of giant fish. Patrick Charles Gallagher says, I always dreamed of owning a small place in Key West. And now he is owning a very, very, very small place in Key West. Giorgio of Versa says, Jesus Christ, these people are horrible. What is, what does that even mean? Leslie and Ford Flossetros dig here. The X, Grok, look it up, huh? Well, I looked up Grok. Uh, apparently it is to understand profoundly or intuitively. Hey there. Oh, you brought the wife and kids. See the iguanas walking through the cemetery there. This is the grave of Captain Bob and Captain Fran. This is the adventure continues. 
got like a shark's fin on top. Over here we have this amazing conch shell grave. Look down here, you can see this. This grave belongs to Sir Peter Anderson. It says he's the Secretary General of the Conch Republic. His epitaph says he had fun. And I'm sure he did. Now, the Conch Republic, for anyone who doesn't know, that is uh, the name that Key West gave itself when it, uh, in the early 80s, declared that it was seceding from the United States of America. Now, the story goes that they declared themselves independent from the United States of America, immediately declared war on the United States of America. Then immediately after that, they, they surrendered to the United States of America. And then immediately after that, they asked the United States of America for foreign aid. There's a little lizard there. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Just hanging out in a cemetery, being a lizard? So many iguanas, they'll just lay out on the graves basking in the sun and occasionally you see one will actually slip inside the graves which is a little creepy now we're on this residential street here in uh, Key West and there is a very very famous tree right here this is the giving tree now, the Giving Tree is a child's book uh, written by one of my favorite childhood authors, Shel Silverstein. She lived in this house right here, actually the area where this current house occupies it used to be a different house here, but Shel Silverstein actually lived here and took inspiration from this banyan tree right here when he wrote the book, The Giving Tree. The Giving Tree about, about a relationship between a boy and a tree. The boy takes from the tree, take, uh, at first he plays with the tree, swings from its branches, then as he gets older, he takes the apples to sell, and then finally, when the boy's life is not going as he hoped, he cuts down the tree and uses it as a canoe just to get far, far away. And in the final scene, the boy comes back and all is left is a stump, and he sits on the stump and rests. And it's a very it's an oddly somber uh, end to a child's book. Now in 2017, tragedy would strike as a hurricane would actually knock down the giving tree and would crush Shel Silverstein's home and destroy it. It looks like they've rebuilt another house um, in the same area and they actually replanted uh, the giving tree, hopefully that it would that it would stay alive. And it looks looks to be uh, very healthy actually. Oh, look at this rooster here. He's selling uh, tickets to uh, scuba dive. Hey there. Rooster hanging out with some pigeons. Up there you can see the actual flag of the Conch Republic. Flapping in the wind there. the historic Key West Sculpture Gardens. Let's get us all these busts of different people that are important to Key West. Over here we have Tennessee Williams. He wrote uh, a streetcar named Desire. Stella! like this guy's hat right here. Over here we have Ernest Hemingway, one of the most famous residents of Key West and noted cat lover. That's a very interesting way to display busts. Oh, look at this guy's beard. The statue here is called the Wreckers. I guess these men were men that would uh, rescue people and cargo from shipwrecks. Heading out here to Mallory Square, they have a nightly sunset celebration where 
People gather to watch the sunset. We had COVID. We had the election. We had TikTok. <laughs> I don't know how to sum up the problems of this world. What I do know how to do is bring a group of strangers together. Yeah. And together we can share a laugh, a smile, a good time, forget about our problems, spread some joy. If I do that today, I did my job. I gave you all everything that I have. It's your turn. Do your job. Give me. <laughs> I appreciate you all. Be kind to one another. Say nice things. Smile. The Bible says with death comes judgment, not reincarnation. You die in your sin, you end up in hell. Then as you follow the herd down the broad road, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. No man or woman will ever come to the Father in heaven except through me. Please know well, my friends, Jesus didn't say, hey, I'm one of the ways, there are many. What I'm not a governmental one. We have the southernmost bagpiper in the USA. Balancing on his one hand there. This dog here, it looks like he's gonna do something awesome. Lay him on down. Hey, lay him on. Lay down. Roll on over. Come on, roll on over. Roll over. Yeah, all right. Right foot in. Right foot out. Shake it all about. Hey! 
Oh, here you go. What's his name? Lottie Moe. Lottie Moe. Lottie Money. Appreciate you guys joining me here today in Key West, Florida. Hope you enjoyed our tour. Maybe you even learned something. Uh, if you like these videos, uh, please subscribe and let you know when a new video is out. Check out some of the older videos on my channel. I promise you some of those are interesting. And if you want to make a suggestion on which place I should go next, leave that in the comment section. Other ways you can help with the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month. Also selling some good stuff in the Etsy shop. Until next time, this one's in the bag.